Perup, are you getting tired of being capped on your internet? Well, not anymore. WaveDirect has no data caps, and with great local customer service, why go anywhere else? 30-day trials are available. Call 775-253-3887. News 46 is brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For more information, call 751-0349. News is also brought to you by Golden Casino Group, where you'll always find great fun, good food, and fantastic entertainment, all at Gold Town, Lakeside, and the Pahrump Nugget. News is also brought to you by Inspiration Senior Living, where we provide affordable elegance to Pahrump area seniors. Give us a call at 751-2300 and make an appointment to tour our community. Tonight on News 46, a suspect demands pills after breaking into a home. VEA opens a new convenient kiosk and learn the importance of being earnest at Sanders Family Winery. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell and Jason Kodlitz. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening. It's Friday, June 13th, 2014. I'm Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. The families of the killers of two Metro officers and a civilian have claimed their bodies. A family source says a private funeral likely will be held next weekend for Jared Miller in Richland, Washington, where he was raised. Amanda Miller's body has been sent to Indiana. Jared and Amanda Miller shot and killed Metro officers 31-year-old Igor Saldo and 41-year-old Alan Beck while they were eating lunch Sunday at CeCe's restaurant near Stewart and Nellis Boulevard in Las Vegas. The Millers then went to a nearby Walmart. 31-year-old customer Joseph Wilcox, who had a gun and a concealed carry permit, confronted Jared Miller, unaware that Amanda Miller was also armed. She shot and killed Wilcox. Metro officers shot and killed Jared Miller during the confrontation. Amanda Miller then committed suicide. Saldo's funeral was Thursday. Beck's funeral is scheduled for 9 a.m. tomorrow, Saturday at the Smith Center. And Wilcox's funeral is scheduled for 2 p.m on Sunday, June 22nd at the Palm Downtown Mortuary. The services will be open to the public. Michael Allian Williamson has been arrested following a home invasion in which the suspect is accused of demanding pills after breaking into residence on Pershing Avenue here in Pahrump. Williamson allegedly forced his way into the woman's apartment and demanded she give him her prescription medication. Police were originally dispatched to the area of Mount Charleston Drive and Calvada Boulevard for a report of a man threatening to kill himself. The suspect, later identified as Michael Allen Williamson, had reportedly gotten into an argument with a family member and then run out of his house with a handgun. They found Williamson at a residence hiding underneath some clothes in the woman's closet after hearing screams from her home. Well, Valley Electric Association has a new Easy Pay kiosk conveniently located inside Smith's. Currently, we just put a new kiosk machine. It's similar to the one we have here in the drive up. Um, it's an easy way of to pay. It's a convenient way to pay for our members. There's an easy pay kiosk card that we can make you. It's free of charge. Just come into the office and ask. You can pay that way by check, electronic check, excuse me, debit card, credit card, or cash. Please keep in mind it does not take coin, nor does it give you any change, but any credit balance on the account will go to your next bill. These cards, the Easy Pay cards, you can pick them up here at the Valley Electric Association's office on Highway 372. Why are they more convenient? If you don't have your bill, you just stick it in your wallet. It's there all the time. It's, you'll, if you forget it, oh, I came to the store to pay a bill. Wait a minute, I have a card right in my wallet. It's very convenient. You just put it in there and it's ready to go. That way you don't have to have your account number or any other information. Correct, correct. It also saves your banking account information so that you can just simply hit a button really quickly and then it'll withdraw the funds out of your account? Absolutely. That's one of the most convenient features it does have. It stores the information. That way you don't have to, say if you do an electronic check, you don't have to enter the routing and checking number every time. You can just swipe your card and go, but if it's already there, you just touch it, it's paid, you print your receipt, and you're on your way. Tell me about 
putting this inside the Smith store. Why did you guys decide to do that? We just selected one of the most popular destinations that our, our local members shop at. How, how can people get more information? You can come right into the office. At, we're located at 800 East Highway 372, or you can give us a phone call at 775-727-5312. And as we head into our first break, here's Jeff Simmons down at the Prompt Nugget. Hello, everybody. I'm Jeff Simmons here at the Prompt Nugget. Start off with our stage bar tonight. we got 60s Sensation. Sounds like a very good band to me. Just come down and check them out. And then our casino drawings every Friday and Saturday from 7 to 8.30 every half hour. Well, you can win up to $1,000 cash. And then at 9 p.m., somebody can win a 60-inch LG plasma TV. So it's every Friday and Saturday from 7 till 9 p.m. And uh, casino, the Father's Day is coming up. Uh, we got all of our food, all of our food outlets, cafe, steakhouse, buffet. We all have specials for the fathers. Come down and enjoy your food. And in bingo, Father's Day coming up this Sunday. We have special sessions at the one and seven, and higher payouts, special drawings. Those two sessions, and we got free dollars to all players all day, and a free gift for all fathers all day. Why supplies last? And then we do have our Balls on the Wall it's a promotion in bingo every Thursday at the 1 and 7. And then you get double punches every Tuesday and Friday at the 1 and 7. So everything's at 1 and 7. I try to make it simple so you can remember. And we'll go with Gold Town. Kathy's still having her paper only every day at 11 a.m. And then Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, it's 11 and 1 p.m. Paper only, no split pots. But looking forward to come on down all of our... All of our Casinos have special drawings on Fridays and Saturdays, so good luck to everybody. Hope to see you here. Bye-bye. This portion of the news is brought to you by Integrity Taxi. Reliable, safe, and fun. Call Integrity Taxi at 751-1111. Welcome back to News 46. 34-year-old Jason Taffy has taken a plea deal for second-degree murder. Taffy is a suspect in the July 2013 murder of Charles Kinkle from Silver Peak. He will be sentenced next month. Taffy, who was originally charged with first-degree murder, said he witnessed Kinkle attempting to molest a 10-year-old girl, and that is why he and his co-defendant, 42-year-old Coleman Ward, shot and killed him and put Kinkle's body in a well. Ward has reportedly not accepted any kind of deal from the district attorney's office at this time. The Shadow Mountain Community Players will be at Sanders Family Winery tonight and tomorrow night with their new performance of The Importance of Being Earnest. The Importance of Being Earnest. The Shadow Mountain Players will do it out at Jack's Winery. We'll do it June, was it 14th? Pardon me, 13th and 14th. That's Friday and Saturday. Uh, Jack's will have the gates open at 6. He'll have his free wine tasting ahead of that, so you can get some wine. I'd suggest take a little picnic lunch with you. Uh, the evenings, the days are hot, but the evenings are kind of nice out there. And we'll do it for the two nights out there. The show is an English comedy. They say it's a typical comedy for serious folks, but there's a lot of laughs in it. It can make a very good evening out of it. And just all just a lot of fun. And this is an important piece of theater, and that's why the Shadow Mountain Players decided to bring it to Pahrump. And so the doors open at what time? Doors open at 6. Show starts at dark. It's $15 is the ticket price on it. People can buy them ahead of time? They can buy them at the library. They can buy them down at Jack Sanders, or they can call 727-6145 and make reservations. What's the t uh, date again? Okay, dates are June 13th and 14th. That's Friday and Saturday. Down there on Kellogg Road. Right. That's that the new winery in Pahrump, Jack Sanders Family Winery. Well, there's going to be a book signing tomorrow at the Prump Community Library on East Street. I am having a book signing on Saturday. Uh, that's the 14th at the Prump Valley Library. Um, we're going to be there from 11 to 1, uh, signing books and, of course, selling them. And I'm going to do a reading at 11.30. And if there's people around, we can do another reading, you know, maybe like 12.30 or something. But uh, the new book is uh, Sharks and Minnows. It's my first. It's being very well reviewed on Amazon. And um, it's available, of course, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, on that. But, um, but at the book signing, you get it less expensively. So um, it's $10 at the, at the book signing, plus, you know, get it signed. Um, and... Um, you know, it's just uh, looks like we're going to have some good community support, and I'm kind of excited because it's my first one. When we come back from this break, we'll have some more local news, and I'm going to tell you some information about the scanner controversy. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. 
Barump Early Learning Academy, our goal is to provide a complete nurturing environment for the growth and development of the whole child, socially, emotionally, physically, and intellectually. Children are natural explorers and need hands-on experiences to help stimulate their own imaginations. We strive to meet the needs of each individual child at their developmental level through planned activities, plus help each child attain a higher level of achievement. Call 751-5335 for more information. Today's news is brought to you in part by Dr. George Leakes, Pahrump's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. And here's Sharon D'Alessio with this week's Save a Pet named Theodore. Save a Pet, proudly brought to you by Draft Picks, located on Highway 160 and Postal Road. Hi, my name is Sharon D'Alessio. I'm out here at Tales and Shelter, located behind the county courthouse at Ceres and Kitty Hawk. This is Theodore. It's a young adult mixed cocker unsterilized. It would be $85 to adopt him, but that would cover the sterilization, rabies shots, and first-year license. Please come out and see us. Our phone number is 775-751-7020. Save a Pet, proudly brought to you by Draft Picks, located on Highway 160 and Postal Road. Theodore is so cute. There's so many animals down there at the animal shelter, so go on down there. It makes a good Father's Day gift. Today we speak to our last filmmaker from this year's High Desert International Film Festival, Meet Wayne Bradford, who is a previous festival award winner. So this year I actually entered two scripts in the screenwriting contest, yeah. So one was called Helix King and the other one was called Ulterior Motive. Yeah, and those are things that we're going to be seeing from you soon? Someday, I hope, yeah. There's a bit of budget involved, so I've got to raise some money for, uh, for one of them. But actually, um, I'm actually taking the two scripts and currently working on combining them into a feature film. Wow, fantastic. Um, Let's list some of the films that you've worked on in the past. Okay, so here at High Desert uh, International Fest Film Festival in the last couple of years, I've had a couple of films. In 2011, uh, my film Futility won the People's Choice Award. And last year, I had another film here called To Catch a Spy. And um, so the ones that you entered for the screenwriting competition, is that the ones that you're working on next, or do you have some other ones that you're working on that's coming up soon? I've got uh, an, uh, a myriad of projects in the works at the moment, but um, yeah, so they're ones that I'm working towards. Um, I've got another project at the moment I'm, I'm producing for another guy. It's a, 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 a sci-fi feature uh, that we're working on. So. so since you didn't enter a film into this festival, tell me how you're liking the film so far. The films are really, really good here, yeah. Um, every year I come and I'm amazed by the quality of films that comes out here to um, Pahrump and uh, we came back this year, number one, because we wanted to see more films and enjoy the people here. Exactly. And the scripts that I entered were kind of secondary, really. <laughs> and isn't it a different kind of um, atmosphere at the short film festivals um, when you get to collaborate with other filmmakers? That's one of the great opportunities, actually, and, and that's why Prump is great, because it is kind of small that you actually get to to spend a lot of time with other filmmakers and, and chat a lot about what we love doing. So and Talk to them, and Linda kind of encourages that to happen. Yeah, and Linda's awesome. <laughs> she uh, really does a great job um, getting this film festival together every year, and mm -hmm. you know she's got a vision, and she keeps growing the film festival, and it's a great opportunity just to come and, and enjoy films and enjoy each other's company. So, For more information on Wayne Bradford, how we can find out? Uh, if you go to www. Uh, workingweekendproductions.com so workingweekendproductions.com Thanks so much to Linda Cass for putting on that High Desert International Film Festival. Well, Shoshone's own Susan Sorrells will be speaking tomorrow at the Prump Valley Historical Museum. Hi folks, this is Phil Huff from the Prump Valley Museum. I wanted to tell you about our next lecture. On June 14th, Saturday, June 14th, we're going to have our guest lecture by Susan Sorrells. If you don't know the name Susan Sorrells, she is the owner of Shoshone, the town that's west of us. And uh, she's lived there since she was born. She's from famous folks. The people that have the history of the town of Shoshone are very famous people in California and Pahrump history. So Susan is going to come and tell us about uh, growing up in a really, really rural area, even though it was Inyo Kern, she's uh, been over to Prompt very much. She also is going to tell us about the caves 
uh, which everyone seems to be interested in, and some of the history of Shoshone, some of the history of her family. So this will be very interesting. Uh, it's, a, it's a keynote lecture, so try and be there the 14th of June. It's 1 o'clock, a Saturday. It's at the Pahrump Valley Museum. We're located on Basin Avenue between 160 and Blagg. 1 o'clock on Saturday, June 14th. It's free. Please come and see us. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. A lot of people don't know that Shoshone is a privately owned town. Well, let's join Angela Miles, who reports in today's First Business Brief. This is the First Business Brief for Friday the 13th. I'm Angela Miles. In a surprising move, Tesla is sharing all of its patents with its rivals. Tesla CEO Elon Musk says it's in the spirit of advancing electric car technology. Boeing is striking a deal with Japanese manufacturers. Five Japanese companies will produce key components for Boeing's 777X jets. It includes the fuselage and landing gear wells. And the CEO of Twitter is reformatting the social media company. The New York Times reports Dick Costolo is taking a more direct role in fixing Twitter's issues, and it's translating into fewer responsibilities for top managers. On Thursday, Twitter's chief financial officer, Ali Rogani, resigned and reportedly won't be replaced. Rogani is credited with bringing TV and celebrity chatter to Twitter. The stock traded last at $36. That's a First Business Brief. I'm Angela Miles. All right, thanks, Angela. All right, I got two scanners right here. I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about what's going on with the scanners because as if you know me, you know I'm constantly listening to the police and fire scanners to find out any breaking news stories or spot news. And of course, the Nye County Sheriff's Office switching over to the digital scanner took me off of the analog channel and it was hard to figure out exactly what we were supposed to purchase. I would like to thank uh, Dave and Patty Grubb for letting me borrow their digital scanner so that we could find out what we exactly needed to purchase and what we needed to do. I know a lot of people listen out there and there's been a lot of talk about having to spend four or six thousand dollars on these scanners. I can tell you that this scanner I found online for $179 on eBay, they had some new ones. You can also go up around two or 300 on these. This is a Radio Shack Pro 106. You can buy any other type of scanner that you would like to buy, but it just needs to be digital. You for sure need to make sure that it says digital when you purchase it. And uh, this is an analog scanner that um, pick that we used to use for picking up uh, police and fire. It still picks up Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue because they're they're going to stay on analog. So if you do get a digital scanner, you'll have two scanners so that they won't walk on each other. So that's kind of convenient. But if you need to pick up the Nye County Sheriff's Office, you have to get a digital scanner. And they are picking up the old channels, which is kind of interesting. Uh, if you guys have the old channel numbers, they're still picking up those, but there are some new numbers and we do have copies of those numbers if you want to contact us here at the station to get a copy of those at 727-9400 extension 201 and I can just Xerox you off a copy of what those new numbers are. But uh, we just want to let everybody know you do not need to buy the expensive scanners. Uh, you can usually around 199 to 250 is what they're going for on the web. And uh, just, it needs to say digital. Once again, this is a Pro 106 and, uh, and it should work pretty quickly. They also have a signal stalker so that it can pick up any signals so that when you do a search, it'll look for the channels that it can pick up here locally. Well, that's it. I told you all about the scanners. When we come back from this break, we're gonna have your weather and a slew of announcements for the weekend events. Stay tuned. News 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. Hello and welcome back to News 46. Today is Friday, June 13th. Today we had sunny skies with a high of 95 degrees. Your average temperature around this time of year is 98 degrees, so it's actually cooler outside than it usually is, even though it's, you know, still freakishly hot out there. Winds are coming from the southwest at 14 miles per hour today with gusts up to 25 miles per hour, so some pretty high winds there. The UV index today was 10, which is very high. Humidity was at 7%, sunrise is at 526 this morning, and the record high in 1940 was 114 degrees.
tonight we'll have clear skies with a low of 65 degrees. Your average temperature at this time of year is 74 degrees. Winds will be coming from the north-northwest at 8 miles per hour with gusts up to 22 miles per hour. So the winds will be calming down a little bit, but they'll still be pretty high. Humidity will be at 11%. Sunset will be at 8.02 p.m. And the record low in 1938 was 49 degrees. Tomorrow we'll have sunny skies with a high of 91 degrees and a low of 64 degrees. Winds will be coming from the west-northwest at 6 miles per hour with gusts up to 12 miles per hour. Humidity will be at 8%. Sunrise will be at 526 a.m. And the UV index will be 10, which is very high. For our seven-day forecast, we'll have a mostly sunny week. Your high temperatures will be ranging from the low to high 90s, and your low temperatures will be ranging from the low to high 60s. Thanks so much, Noah. Subway is still continuing with donating their profits from their cookies to help seven-year-old Mikey, who is battling leukemia. Go by either Subway location to buy your cookies and donate to Mikey and his family. You can also donate to Mikey on the web at the site GoFundMe. You can just search for Mikey and Ashley's journey. You can also donate at Nevada State Bank for the account named Something Positive Incorporated. Nevada State Parks is offering free day use admission to celebrate Discover Nevada State Parks Day, an official Nevada 150 event. It will be held tomorrow, Saturday, June 14th at all 23 Nevada State Parks. And don't forget the Sanders Family Winery, the Shadow Mountain Community Players, um, their performance of the importance of being earnest. The doors open at 6 p.m. The performance starts at 7. It is tonight and tomorrow night. The movies in the park will be held tomorrow night at Ian Deutsch Memorial Park. The movie Thor is playing, and that starts at dusk, and it's free to everybody. Just bring a chair or a blanket and have some fun. There's also, you know, the community pool is open right now, but on Sunday, there will be free swimming at the community pool from noon until 7 p.m. And the Prump Valley Historical Museum is having that 1 p.m. lecture tomorrow with Susan Sorrells from Shoshone. The book signing at the library at 11 a.m. Go on down there and see Francine Winters in her new book. And we would also like to tell everybody that Mercy Air is going to be having that Mikey challenge to help out the seven-year-old who is battling leukemia at 1 p.m. tomorrow on Calvada, right next to Healthcare Partners at the helipad there. They're going to be doing that challenge with all five of the crew members, so that's going to be exciting. We'll bring you that on Monday if you guys don't want to stop by and cheer them on, but uh, you're more than welcome to do that too as well. I would also like to wish uh, Pete Wallace a very happy 70th birthday. I heard last weekend at Pahrump Valley Speedway, everybody sang him happy birthday. Happy birthday out there to Pete. And I know that it's Friday the 13th and it's a full moon. I want everybody to be really careful out there because I don't want to be reporting any incidents. But I also want to uh, say a very happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here Monday. Good night.